My name is Philippe Pichon. I'm in Year 9 at Benin Park School. And for this year's Holocaust Memorial Day 2023, I would like to share the story of my great-great-grandfather, Petlewski Władysław. Petlewski Władysław was drafted to military service in Lublin, Poland, in March 1938 at the age of 22. The Polish army had been secretly mobilizing the army. From 1st September 1939, Hitler invaded Poland and occupied it. Now, under German occupation, in February 1940, Pytlewski joined the ZWZ, Związek Walki Zbrojnej, or Union of Armed Struggle, an underground army formed in Poland, whose member includes Lieutenant Jerzy Wol, Marian Chałupka, Tadeusz Kopeć, Ryszard Majewski. In Wol's attic, they began mounting a radio station. At Kopeć's house, they stored weapon and big drills. In February 1941, Petlewski got married and ran a local shop together with his wife. In March 1941, Kopeć, Chałupka and Wal were arrested for being spies. My great-great-grandfather could no longer work as, at the store, so started working as a decorator and began changing his workplace every couple of days, hoping the German could not find him. On 18th of May 1941, my great-great-grandparents received a letter saying that their house was intended for expansion into the brewery and that they had to leave their property within a week. On 23rd of May 1941, a man came saying he had some paperwork for another property for them, but it must be signed by Petlewski. My great-great-grandmother said she did not know where Petlewski was. The man threatened that if the papers were not signed, they would be thrown out of the street. He gave her the papers and said he would wait in the flat for her to get them signed. She believed him. She looked around to check that no one was following her, but right behind her two Gestapo dressed as a civilians, took the document, told her it was fake, then ripped it. They told her to go home and then push my great-great-grandfather into a car and took him to jail at the castle in Lublin. The next day she was kicked out of the flat and not allowed to take anything with her. The flat and shop were given to a German who ran the shop until the end of the war. In jail at the castle, I was in tower number one, in a single cell and questioned by the Gestapo for multiple days using their methods like needles under your nails, strapido, beating until a loss of consciousness and awakening with cold water, and pouring water into the nose. They wanted to know everything about the organisation and know every surname as well as surnames of friends. Stubbornly, I insisted that I didn't know about any organisation and that I wasn't part of any, and were given surnames I knew because I went with them to school. That's how the multiple day questioning went. On the 29th of July, 1941, around 900 surnames of prisoners were named. Outside the castle, they checked our surnames with lists, then trucks came, in which we were ordered to go in and we were taken to a train station. We were loaded into cattle wagons and the train went on. We didn't know where we, they were taking us. The next day, the train stopped. They opened the doors and the SS guards started screaming, Raus schnell aussteigen. 
They were lined up in two rows with the dogs up to the camp gate, above which we saw the sign, Arbe Mach Frey. We had to run between them while they pounded the dogs, hit and kicked us. This beating and screaming made a terrible impression on me. It was a shock. During this run, I got hit on the back several times and the dog grabbed my leg. After passing the gate, we were put in fives and led to the bathhouse. Before entering the baths, they ordered us to strip naked and cut our hair. After the shaving, we ran to the baths as if to take a bath. We hadn't gone wet yet and they were already shouting, Rouse! After leaving the bathhouse, they ordered us to stand in a row and one by one to approach the table behind which the camp clerk was sitting. Everyone who approached gave a name and surname. After checking against the list, they received clothes, stripped uniforms, underwear, a hat and shoes with a wooden sole, the two and two cloths with a camp number. I was given the camp number 19606. One cloth was to be sewn on the left trouser leg above the knee, and the other square with the number in a red circle, and the letter P on the left breast. The red circle marked political prisoners and the letters national affiliation. Everyone had to sue them themselves. After getting dressed in fives, we marched to building block number 10, to the first floor. We were greeted by the block supervisor and he announced that we would only be in his block during the quarantine period, that is, adapting to the new conditions in the camp. He mentioned that we are now in the Auschwitz concentration camp and we rely only on him because he is the master of life and death here on the block. You are just numbers here and a number disappears very easily from the face of the earth. The windows of our block overlooked the death hall of block 11. During the execution, it was impossible to approach the window because the executors were shooting at the curious ones who dared to look.